Three, two, one, blast off. It's time to make some homemade rockets and see if we can send them flying on some homemade rocket fuel. You may have seen the idea of making rocket fuel or homemade rockets before. I'm not claiming to have invented anything new here, but it should be a good time testing these rockets and fuel. Today we'll make a couple of actual rockets. Let's see if we can make them fly. Let's start by making some big rockets. I collected a bunch of cardboard tubes from paper towels, aluminum foil, even a small tube from a kid's toy package. After a bit of experimenting with tube sizes and which ones would work together, I decided to make a rocket engine casing for the metal rocket body I found in a junk pile. carefully cut the tube to size. Using some cardboard and duct tape, I cover one end of the tube to help contain the rocket fuel. By the way, I'm using some aluminum foil duct tape, which is some of the most amazing duct tape I've ever worked with. It's very handy and can be used for many things. After covering one end of the rocket engine tube, we need to increase the diameter of the tube so it will fit nice and snug inside the rocket body. I'll keep building it up with duct tape until we get a nice fit. Now I'm moving on to a completely homemade rocket. It's built entirely from cardboard tubes and tape. This is a real gem of a rocket that you can make on a low budget. In fact, you might have everything you need lying around the house. I made mine pretty crude, but I think we can get this thing off the ground with our rocket engines. It is fairly aerodynamic, lightweight, and best of all, cheap. Now I'm working on the rocket engine housing for this rocket, which I think needs to be a little bigger, as this is a bigger rocket. After carefully creating a tube to house the rocket fuel, I cap off one end and add duct tape to create a snug fit. It's time to add some fins to the rockets. I'm using cardboard and aluminum foil duct tape to attach them to the rocket. It's important that each fin has a consistent shape, size, and placement around the rocket. Take your time and do a good job when you add these. Just make sure everything is taped up good and connected securely. I recommend having a good pair of scissors and a good hobby knife handy to make the process easier. some details and finished off the rockets. Fingers crossed we should be able to get these off the ground tomorrow. Now we need some rocket fuel which you can learn to make from my last video. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video if you need to learn how to make rocket fuel. I should have mentioned in the last video also that you can get this potassium nitrate in the form of stump remover from your local lawn and garden center or you can buy it online.
After melting the sugar and potassium nitrate together, it's time to fill the various tubes I've created to contain the fuel. I'm carefully packing the rocket fuel into the cylinders to create various sizes of rocket engines. You'll notice I've added a wick to the engines also. This will make ignition safer and easier. I think we're pretty well set, now it's time to go test these out. Okay, now I'm not going to call that a complete success. I would more likely call it a successful failure. We did learn a lot today, but we weren't able to get anything off the ground. So it's time to revise our design a little bit and see if we can't make something for next week that will absolutely fly. Now we did learn a couple things today, one of those being that our rocket fuel is actually pretty good. It provides a pretty good burn rate and should produce enough thrust that we can get these off the ground. The problem with that is that our rocket engines had too big of an opening. We weren't actually trying to constrict that thrust down to a smaller point and provide a lot greater lift. So I think for next week I'm going to redesign the rocket engines. I mean our rockets are still in pretty decent shape. This one's burned up a little bit down here on the bottom. Uh, this one is still perfect and uh, it just needs a little cleaning. So. We've got good rockets now, it's just going to be a matter of getting those engines refined so that we can actually get these off the ground. But like I said, I have a good solution. Um, I hope my wife doesn't get mad, but I dug into her cake decorating supplies and found these nice little cones. I found these nice little cones. So you can see they have a much smaller opening, which I'm thinking at the base of our rocket, if we could somehow have that cone to help force the thrust out a smaller opening, I think we would actually achieve some pretty good lift there. 
Um, so we're going to try that. I'm going to try and redesign these engines and see if we can come up with something a little bit better and something that will actually work. So it's, you know, part of the process of science, trying something and finding out that it doesn't work. So you try something different and uh, hopefully you find a solution. So we're going to keep trying. I'm not giving up on this yet. I know that we can make homemade rockets for next to nothing uh, as far as the cost of materials. It's just a matter of uh, figuring it out. So we're going to try again. We'll come back next week. I hope you guys will join us as well. I'd sure love to see you around. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this, even though it was kind of a successful failure. All right, I hope you guys still enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button down there. Uh, if it's your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you have some great ideas on how to improve these rockets, make sure you leave me a little comment down below. Uh, make sure you join me next week as well, because I'm pretty sure by then we can work it out and uh, actually get something that'll fly. So it should be a good time. Come back then and uh, check that out as well. Aside from that, I'll catch you guys next time.